Hello, in this video we'll be showing you how to use different slit lamp illumination techniques. This builds from the previous video, which is an introduction to using a slit lamp. I would recommend watching this first before attempting these techniques. There are many different illumination techniques that we'll be showing. Direct illumination, retro illumination, sclerotic scatter and specular reflection. These are all illumination techniques for the anterior segment examination. Throughout this video, you may see me adjusting the slit beam properties. To remind you, you can alter the slit width by turning the dial on the illumination arm. You can also change the slit beam height by adjusting this dial. Use an unfiltered white light to adjust the brightness with the dial. Let's start with diffuse illumination. You should use a wide, tall beam with a moderate brightness with about 10 times magnification. This technique can be used to detect gross abnormalities by evenly illuminating the anterior segment. Next is direct illumination. Direct illumination involves your microscope being focused directly on the slit beam. There are different ways to use direct illumination depending on how wide the slit beam is. Let's look at the moderate width first. Use a tall slit beam, which is about one to two millimeters wide, which is moderately bright. You can go up to 25 magnification if required. This will give you a moderate slit beam, which can be used to directly view structures with a high contrast. You can use this method with slight adjustments to see other structures by dynamically moving the illumination arm angle. If you shorten the height of the beam and use about a 45 degree angle, you can examine the anterior chamber. You can also focus further back into the vitreous to look for cells or tobacco dust. If you use a thin narrow beam, you can produce an optical section. This technique can help you to assess semi-transparent structures such as the cornea or lens. For this, you should use a tall, thin beam with high brightness intensity. Move the illumination arm to around 45 degrees and adjust appropriately. As you can see, it optically dissects the cornea and you can see a cross section. You can use increased magnifications to help you define specific structures, such as the epithelium, stroma or endothelium. Next is the retro illumination technique. It uses reflected light to illuminate other areas from behind. You can reflect light from the iris or the retina. To use the iris to retro illuminate, use a tall, moderately bright slit beam and angle the illumination arm. This can be helpful to detect fine corneal changes. To use the retina to retroilluminate, use a bright beam and direct the light source on the posterior surface of the retina. Using the red reflex, you can assess the lens and observe any iris translumination defects. You should reduce the height of the slit beam for this. Sclerotic scatter. This involves decentering the slit beam laterally so that the cornea acts as a light conducting medium. With total internal reflection, you get a generalized glow around the limbus, and this can be used to highlight subtle corneal stromal opacities, such as corneal edema or deposits. Focus on the cornea with the illumination angled at about 60 degrees. Then uncouple the light source so that it's positioned on the limbus. Increase the light intensity and adjust the height so you get a complete halo around the limbus. When the slip beam is displaced onto the limbus, ensure the microscope remains focused on the cornea. Specular reflection. This technique is mainly used to observe the corneal endothelium, but can also be used to see subtle changes on the surface texture of the conjunctiva, tail film, anterior cornea or a contact lens. To look at the corneal endothelium, start with the optical section of the cornea. Adjust the illumination angle until you see a bright reflection. You want the angle of incidence to equal the angle of reflection. You can move the observation arm if required. This is the corneal Purkinje image. Adjacent to this bright reflection, focus on the slightly dimmer area and increase your magnification to around 40. You can see the mosaic pattern of the endothelial cells. 
Discontinuities are highlighted in an otherwise smooth reflective surface and it can be used to look at the corneal endothelium for corneal guttata. This concludes some of the more advanced illumination sit lamp techniques. We hope you found this video helpful. Thank you very much for watching.